afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will speak about networks, in particular, networks for impact. Why? Because I believe they offer an alternative way of organizing and also for scaling our impact for all these great solutions that you've been hearing about. A way of organizing that prioritizes long-term impact above fast results, collective outcomes instead of individual interests, and builds bridges between diverse, different actors instead of seeking easy collaboration. And let's be honest, if we are to face the social and environmental challenges that we are already facing, we need more long-term impact, collective outcomes, and difficult collaboration. Over the last 20 years, I have led and helped build three such international networks for impact. In the not-for-profit world with ISEC, in the arts and culture world with the Tate Plus Network, and in the impact business world with the Impact Hub. And through these experiences, I have come to realize a productive network for impact needs three things. First thing is a focus on dynamic steering versus plans. Think of it as the difference between playing chess and playing the game of snakes and ladders. In chess, you learn many predefined strategies as developed by the masters, and if you apply those in the right context, you mostly win. In snakes and ladders, every game is an unfolding new reality. You take two steps forward, step on a ladder, accelerates you close to your objective. Sometimes you take three steps backwards, step on a snake, a downward pushing force, and you're back at the beginning of the game. Success in this game is not about applying the right strategy in the right context, but it's about dynamically steering through the mess in a way without losing perspective towards your end objective. That's a lot how networks are. And, okay, how does one do good dynamic steering, then? In my experience, you need an inspiring North Star, a clear next step, and a strong learning process. A North Star that rallies the diverse, different objectives of the actors of the network. It defines the collective impact and gives clear indicators for success, so everybody knows whether or not we've achieved that North Star but it also allows total freedom of action, so each individual actor can look at their unique strengths and define the most appropriate next step towards that North Star. Of course, they need to share those next steps and remain responsible and accountable. But if you have a North Star and a next step, you won't progress very fast, and we are, you know, fast needed to do some solutions. So you need a strong learning process, the kind of learning process that basically speeds up the results of each individual actor at the power of collective intelligence. Every time somebody takes an action, everybody else needs to learn. And very importantly, in a learning process, don't avoid failure. Failure is an early warning system. It tells you you need to learn something, and you better do that quick. So that's a good learning process when you do that. So let's assume you got good at dynamic steering. What else you need to build good networks for impact? The second ingredient is trust. Trust is the core currency of a network. It's like blood to our bodies. It keeps it connected and it keeps it alive. And to build trust, first of all, you need to get great at building relationships. The kind of relationships that benefit both the individuals and the organizations in your network. The kind of relationships that are there both in the good and particularly in the bad times to support each other, right? And the good news is that research says that an actor in a network needs only five such value-generating relationships to already build a basis of trust. Only five for each actor. That's achievable. The problem is that networks, though, as I said, bring together diverse different actors and try to solve complex issues. By that design, they invite conflict and tension at the center. And conflict and tension usually are opposed to trust building and great relationships. So in a network, you also need to get really great at building and resolving situations of conflict. In fact, some of my best memories of the networks I led are terrible conflict situations. The kind that both I and really mostly everybody thought 
they will break us. That situation will break us. But they didn't, because we sat down, we quarreled horribly, I would say, sometimes, but we continued to listen, and we continued to try to seek ways to collaborate until we figured it out. And now those moments are watershed moments for these networks, those in which we felt we built even deeper trust rather than broke it. So get awesome at conflict management because you're going to have plenty of it in a network for impact. So let's assume you got good at that too and at dynamic steering. What's the third ingredient? The third ingredient, ladies and gentlemen, is personal. It's about the type of leader of a network as opposed to a leader of a more hierarchical organization. A good network leader, in my view, is more concerned about the great talent around them and the way they shine than about the safety, power, or security of their role in a network. That means you are intentionally trying to get replaced over time as a leader. That means you see leadership more as a relay race rather than a personal marathon. And make sure that you identify talent that can stand up, can take leadership, can drive the network forward than what you were able to do individually. And in the end, you also need to be open to all the pushback you get by empowering that talent and get very comfortable at being pushed back. Because you know that is the only way you will grow and the only way the network will grow over time. If you do that as a leader, you make sure that you put back the responsibility for the network to its members. And that is essential because the network, as I said, pursues collective outcomes. So it needs collective ownership of those outcomes. It doesn't just need a brilliant leader. Also, because a network tries to resolve complex social or environmental issues and brings diverse players together, it is more likely that it will need more time than whatever the tenure of one leader can be. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, to build a productive network for impact, you need dynamic steering versus plans. Think of it as the game of snakes and ladders, not chess. Secondly, you need trust versus competition. Think of this as the blood of the organization and get great at conflict management, not making it, managing it. <laughs> and the third is focus on collective leadership instead of individual agendas. It will get you further. I will leave with the saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Networks are the perfect impersonation of this saying. And I believe that in today's world, we need more leaders to take us far and to take us together there, rather than fast and alone. So give networks a chance. Thank you. Thank you.